So hello everyone, I'm Ming Kai Zhong from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today I will introduce ERLFS, a compression-friendly read-only file system for resource-scarce devices. The work is done with Xiang, Xie, Wei, Chao, and uh, my advisor Hai Bo Chen. So smartphone is our life now. We want to store everything in our phone, and nobody wants to see such a warning saying that there is no enough space. However, a single system partition can occupy three gigabytes. And with other partitions, the total storage consumed by the OS is even larger. Compressing system resources is an effective approach to release more space for users. And since system resources are read-only, we can use compressed read-only file system, which could be faster than normal file system with, with compression support. SquashFS is the state-of-the-art compressed read-only file system. We try to use ScratchFS for system resources in Android. However, the system lagged and even froze for seconds and then rebooted. So going through the design of, and the implementation of ScratchFS, we find that ScratchFS uses a fixed-sized input compression. To compress data, ScratchFS divides the data into fixed-sized chunks, and then it compresses each chunk separately and stores them one by one in the storage. This kind of compression brings two drawbacks for ScratchFS. The first is read amplification, where reading a single byte requires to decompress the whole chunk. This read is further amplified by I.O. Since the, since the compressed chunks are not aligned to block boundary for, for space efficiency. The other drawback is massive, massive memory consumption during the decompression. Many buffers need to be allocated and data is moved among these buffers during the decompression. This increases the memory pressure in the Android system and affects the performance greatly. These two drawbacks make uh, ScratchFS unacceptable to compress and store system resources in Android. We then propose ERLFS, which uses another uh, compression approach called fixed size output compression. It prepares a large amount of data and compresses them as much as possible until the compressed data reaches a fixed size. Then it repeats the procedure until all data is compressed. Fixed size output compression can reduce read amplification and has better compression ratio. It also allows uh, in-place decompression, which reduces memory copies in the decompression. So before we decompress data, we need to Read the compressed block. We need to read the compressed blocks first, so we need to choose a page to initiate the I/O request. For blocks to be partially decompressed, we allocate a page in dedicated page cache for I/O, so that the following decompression can reuse the cached page. For blocks to be fully decompressed, we try to reuse the page allocated by VFS if it is not going to be used before decompression. We call this implicit I/O, and it reduces memory allocations and the memory consumption during the decompression. Now, we introduce how data is decompressed. Suppose we have eight blo data blocks compressed to a single block, and the application is reading two of the data blocks, say block three and block four. So VFS will first allocate two pages in the file page cache and let ERLFS to fill data in the two pages. The first decompression approach is VMAP decompression. It first counts the number of blocks we need to decompress and allocates physical pages or choose physical, page or choose physical pages from the page cache. In the example, only block zero to block four needs to be decompressed. And ELFS allocates physical pages for block zero, one, and two, and selects the two pages allocated for blocks three and four in the page cache. ELFS then uses the VMAP uses VMAP to allocate a virtual memory area and maps the physical pages in. If it, uh, if, uh, for in-place I.O., ELFS also needs to copy the compressed, compressed block to a temporary per CPU page because the page cache pages are going to be overwritten by the decompression. Then the, decompre sorry. Then the decompression happens and the, de the decompressed data is, uh, is written to the VM area. During the decompression, 
the requested data is directly written to the page cache page to the page cache physical pages. Thus, there's no need data movement is required. We map decompression can handle all decompression cases, but it does not. But it needs to invoke uh, we map and we uh, we unmap for each uh, for each decompression request. And it can allocate an unbounded number of physical pages. For in-place I.O., it also needs to move the compressed data out of the page cache before the decompression. We then propose a buffer decompression in which we pre-allocate a four-page buffer for each CPU. If the page after the decompression is no more than four pages, we directly decompress to the four-page buffer and copy the requested data to the page cache. Buffer decompression requires no VMAP or VMAP or VMAP operations. No physical pages are allocated during the decompression, and there's no need to copy data for in-place I.O. However, it, ha it can only work if the decompressed data is no more than four pages. To further support more general cases with faster decompression, we have other two decompression approaches, rolling decompression and in-place decompression. We also have a policy to choose from the four decompression approaches, and we propose several optimizations for performance and extra features. Details can be found in the paper. Here comes to the evaluation part. We evaluate, we evaluate ERLFS using three platforms, a high-key ARM development, development board, and two kinds of smartphones, one high-end smartphone and a low-end smartphone. We use FIO for the micro benchmark, and the workload is in week, in week nine. ERLFS is configured using LZ4 algorithm with 4K sized, 4K sized output. And we also evaluate other file systems, Scratch FS. Uh, for example, Scratch FS with four kinds of, uh, four kinds of chunk sizes, and the BTRFS and the ESC4 and the F2FS. BTRFS is configured to use LZO algorithm with 128 kilobyte chunk size. It is also configured in the read-only mode and with integrity checks disabled. EST4 and F2FS does, do not compress data since they don't support it. We only show some selected results here, and more results can be found in the paper. We first show the throughput of running, of running FIO in different read patterns. The so x-axis is the read pattern, and the y-axis is the throughput of each file system. We can observe that BTRFF, BTRFS performs worse in all cases. Although BTRF, BTRFS supports compression, it is not designed for read-only data, read data, thus it has worse performance than other compressed, compressed read-only file system. Another observation is that the larger chunk size of Scratch FS brings better performance for sequential and random reads. Since we read the whole file in the, in the experiment, a larger chunk size can reduce the number of decompressions and more reads can be served from the page cache. For the stride, for the stride reads, however, the compressed data will not, be used, will not be reused again. Thus, large chunk size brings only overhead or of amplification amplified I.O. and the decompression. The reduced read amplification and memory consumption makes ERLFS better than Scratch FS in most cases, and the ERLFS achieves better performance than ESC4 in both sequential and the random reads, and the performance is compa comparable to ESC4 for, for spread reads. Here we, sh here we show the micro benchmarks about read amplification and the resource re consumption. We can see that ELFS reduces the read amplification by more than 80% compared to Scratch FS. And the decompression in ELFS saves more than 40% uh, of storage, and it is better than the Scratch FS configured with 4K compression, compression chunk, and it is comparable with the Scratch FS 8K. ELFS reduces more than 90% of memory, memory usage during the decompression. And uh, it, it, its memory usage is smaller than ESD4. It is similar to ESD4, which does not compress data. Finally, 
we show the evaluation of real-world application boot time. We have 13 real-world applications, and the y-axis is the boot time. The y-axis is the boot time. Oops, sorry. Okay. The 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 y uh the y axis is the boot time relative to EST4. In average, ERFS reduce, reduces the boot time by 3.2 percent for low-end smartphones, and 10.9 percent for high-end smartphones. ERFS has been deployed in Huawei smartphone operating system EMUI 9.1 as the top feature, and it is upstream to the Linux kernel. ERFS saves more than 30% of storage used by system resources and achieves comparable, even better performance than ESD4, which is the default, the default file system in the Android system. ERFS has been deployed in more than tens of millions of smartphones. Okay, to conclude, ERFS is an enhanced read-only file system with compression support. It supports fixed-set output compression with full decompression approaches, which saves more than 30% storage while achieving comparable, even better performance than ESD4 on tens of millions of smartphones. Okay, thank you, and I'd like to take questions. Did you guys actually look at what was the battery consumption between what is, the what consumption? The power consumption. So the like power consumption. Right. So if you had EXT4, Squash FS, and Yaro FS, was um, the power consumption still the same on the Android phone? Um, as far as I know, as far as I know, I, I don't. Uh, we do not. We we haven't uh, measured the power consumption for the different uh, uh, com uh, file systems. Do you have any idea where that would go? Because I would assume as a user, they would be concerned about uh, that as well, right? I think the power consumption of ERFS won't be worse because it reduces a lot of things. It, reduce, it reduces the IOs. It reduces the memory allocations. So I think the power consumption won't be, uh, won't be, uh, won't be worse than other file systems. So the CPU, uh, the CPU utilization pretty much remains the same. Um, I don't have the uh, uh, data available, but okay. Uh, um, okay. So we can take that offline. I think uh, the production team has evaluated that, but I don't have the data available. I have. Okay. Russ Plain, Apple. Um, I'm just wondering if during the course of this work, you ran into any workloads that you found performed worse. Um, benchmarks or particular scenarios or applications uh, that unexpectedly triggered uh, maybe an anti-pattern uh, or pathology that, that was unexpected? Uh, so uh, your, quest your question is about whether uh, do we find the performance is worse in some uh, real applications? Uh, yes, there, there are, okay. Okay, I even in the even in the boot time, some applications have a worse boot time. And, um, but, but we think the performance. Okay. Uh, but, but we think the, uh, the, uh, the average performance is better. And uh, for, for these cases, we have, some other, uh, we have some other approaches that we can, you know, for example, we can uh, lose some of the part, some parts of the file uncompressed, and we can use this such ca such kind of combination to mitigate the problem. Yes, um, we have another. Okay, we have the backup slides. Okay, here here is the here is the throughput and the space saving, the, the the relation between the throughput and the space saving uh, for ERFS and ESD4, and here we can see that there is a there's an obvious line here, and if the, if the space saving is less than 20, uh, 24%, the performance of ERF, uh, ERFS the, of the sequential rate is, much, is worse than EST4. And, for, and uh, for this kind of, this kind of scenario, we can just leave some part of the file to be uncompressed, and then 
uh, with the combination of the approaches, we can get the better performance, overall better performance. Hi, I'm Shayna from Western Digital. So I have a question about do, about the, do you have any consideration for the low compress, compress, compression ratio files such as uh, PDF file or picture file or video file? Because if you compress those files, then maybe you got, you maybe lose so your gain and uh, maybe you lose your power consumption. So oh, is there uh, excuse any, me, but what queries? Yeah, I mean, some encrypt, encrypted files. Encrypted those, files? Yeah, or PDF files, or PDF picture files. file, or video files. Mm. Those files, their compression ratio is really low, actually. Yeah, so is there any some sele uh, okay, selective okay. compression? So, yeah. OK, uh, your question is that do we, how we consider the low uh, compression ratio yes. of some encrypted files? Yes. Uh, so. I don't think there, I don't think, uh, I don't know whether there, there's a lot of com, uh, in com, uh, encrypted files in the system resources, but even if there are, uh, these files can be little uncompressed so that, so, so that this part of, this part of uh, file can be, uh, can, be, can be read much faster. Yeah. So we, we, does not, we does not compress everything in the, in, uh, in the real deployment, it does not compress everything in the file system. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if, if some part of the file system is, uh, if for some part of the file system, if, they, if the compression does not bring better performance and it cannot uh, save a lot of storage, we just leave it uncompressed. Okay, okay. thank you. Let's thank our speaker again.